Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here for another poetry discussion, a poetry discussion which will appear, of course, in the poetry discussion playlist here on the channel, now cruising towards 400 videos strong. Uh, so if you do have a favorite poem, be sure to check out that playlist because it could be in there. But also, if you don't find a discussion for your favorite poem on the channel, be sure to leave a request because there is poetry on the channel every Monday. So I've got to have something to talk about, guys. And um, I won't say that I'm running out of poems. That would be a lie. But I do understand that from an audience perspective, sometimes my selections can be uninspired because I love Emily Dickinson and Charles Bukowski so much. But we are currently going through all of Sylvia Plath's work here on the channel, a poet with whom I have notoriously struggled and going poem by poem through her yellow book, the collected poems of Sylvia Plath has been very profitable for me, both from a standpoint of understanding Sylvia Plath, but also I think growing maybe exponentially as a, a poet, a poetry critic. Uh, it has been very useful for me to get this, this large a dose of a poet with whom I often struggle. Speaking of a poet with whom I often struggle, the poem in question today comes to us from Walt Whitman, a poet with whom I often struggle. The poem in question is titled, O oh, Captain, My Captain, and it reads, as such. O captain, my captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship was weathered, every rack, the prize we sought is won. The port is near the bells, I hear the people all exulting. While follow eyes, they steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But O oh, heart, 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 O oh, bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. O oh, captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up for you, the flag is flung, for you, the bugle trills. For you, bouquets and ribboned wreaths, for you, the shores a-crowding. For you, they call a swaying mass, their eager faces turning. Here, captain. Dear Father, this arm beneath your head, it is some dream that on the deck you fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer, his lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm, he has no pulse, nor will. The ship is anchored, safe and sound, his voyage closed and done. From fearful trip the victor ship comes in with object one. Exult, exult, O shores, and ring, O bells. But I, with mournful tread, walk the deck my captain lies, fallen, cold and dead. So the um, interpretation you'll often get on this poem, which is probably pretty accurate, is that this poem is dedicated to the fallen Abraham Lincoln, assassinated shortly after the conclusion of the Civil War. This is a Walt Whitman, I mean, the quintessential American poet, if ever there was one, was perhaps the original poet to define American poetry, I, I I do believe that Emily Dickinson is the penult is the not the penultimate. I think the ultimate poet, um, and the ultimate in American letters overall. But Emily Dickinson, a much different poet than Walt Whitman in many ways, in, in subject matter, perhaps not <clears throat> quite so separate, but. Walt Whitman here is telling us an American story. Following a leader, the leader had died for what it was he stood. A oh, who was? Where's the where's the quote come from? A man who has nothing for which he would die is not fit to live. Is that Martin Luther King Jr.? I believe that might be a letter from Birmingham Jail. 
I'm not sure, but um, regardless, great quote. A man who has nothing for which he would die is not fit to live. This poem, if it is about Abraham Lincoln, I am willing to accept that. I am willing to accept that in all of his interpretations. I don't care. It can be about that. That doesn't help us make it a personal experience. Here's what I would like to suggest to extend for this poem. Do you have... Maybe not idols. I think idols is too celebratory a term, right? Uh, But do you, in your life, have people that you look up to? Are they alive? For me, many of the answers are no. For me, uh, as far as poetry is concerned, it is Emily Dickinson and Charles Bukowski, both dead and gone. As far as short stories are concerned, it is... Ernest Hemingway, dead and gone. As far as novels are concerned, it is William Faulkner, dead and gone. As far as literary criticism is concerned, it is Harold Bloom, dead and gone. As far as intellectualism and uh, perhaps downright persnicketism, it is Christopher Hitchens, dead and gone. This idea of the past leader. This idea of the individual from the... So, here's the question that I have with this poem. Who is our speaker? Is this the second in command on the ship? I don't know that we have any reason to believe that. Is this just another ship hand? It seems to me that is the more likely answer. Uh, were this were this an individual that was more important than just another guy working on the ship, probably we would have a little bit more information about when it was that the captain died. Probably we'd have a little bit more information about what it is that this individual has to do after that captain died. It seems that this individual's job on the ship had remained the same after the passing of the leader. making this poem maybe the perfect analogy for what it means to really study in the light of someone who has gone before us. Probably in every facet of life, there, there is someone that provides at least a little bit of an example for you. I would, I would wager to bet that unless that unless that role model is a role model for work or family, likely that individual is dead. Think about that. Probably at no point in history have we been so well equipped to have heroes. Now, at the same time, at no point in history have we been so well equipped To tear down heroes, nothing is mythical anymore. All of a person's worst qualities, worst moments, are encapsulated in time forever to be searchable on the internet. But, at the same time, in days of yore, if you were to have a hero, for example, someone to whom you look up, That's still not right, is it, to whom you look up? Anyway, those individuals would almost completely have to be read about, right? Now, not only... So, for example, William Faulkner, my hero for novel writing, if you you want to put it that way, you would either have to read the original texts or read biographies. Not a whole lot of biographies that I know of about William Faulkner. There is one which is about his rivalry with Hemingway that I've, I've never read, but I've seen the, the author give a couple talks. looks very interesting. But you had to go to those sources. Now, there, is, there are snippets of him reading 
Ooh, which novel? I think it's The Sound and the Fury. There are snippets of him reading, I believe, The Sound and the Fury at Mississippi. At the, the universe, I believe it's at Mississippi. The universe, oh, Miss, the university uh, in a class during a lecture. So we, we have all of the, and Christopher Hitchens, I mean, how many people know about Hitchens through his writings almost indelibly? If you know someone in my age range, at least 38 or below, <coughs> pardon me, they found out about Christopher Hitchens on YouTube. Um, so we have a, a weird, precarious point in time where we are so well equipped to have heroes. We are so well equipped to have role models. Some of us, depending on how you want to look at things, so well equipped to have um, icons in our lives. How rare is this actual sentiment? This, oh, captain, my captain, but oh, heart, 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 oh, the bleeding drops of red where my captain, where on the deck my captain lies, right? This is not all that odd. We are living this daily. Here's the thing. Probably you are like this in some, some section of your life, right? I can't get away from looking up to Harold Bloom, looking up to Ernest Hemingway, Emily Dickinson, Charles Bukowski, um, etc. I can't get away from that. How often am I really all that present in their celebration? And I don't think that their celebration needs to necessarily be revelry, right? To celebrate Ernest Hemingway the best way possible is to write a good short story. To celebrate the captain here the best way possible is to get that ship home in fashion, safe and sound as the poem lets us know. Uh, to celebrate any type of figure. If we are to celebrate that figure, the best way we can do it is in the best work that we can put forward. The best way to celebrate an iconic writer is with what... So, I say the best way to celebrate Hemingway is with writing good short stories. Not necessarily the case, actually. The best way to celebrate any... Um, hallowed figure in your life is with the best work that you can do on whatever it is that you work. Probably you are celebrating that figure because you enjoy the very thing that they did and hope to emulate in some way, if not their work, then their success. And by success, I don't necessarily mean critical or commercial. I think it's possible one way. So one way that this is definitely possible. One way where it's one domain in which it is easy to see this being possible is painting, right? Visual arts. Those things are we live in a. So if we live in a society that does not necessarily value art as much as once it did, probably painting is the easiest form to appreciate this. Uh, who's, the, who's, the, who's the greatest painter of today? Genuinely ask. I have no idea. I have, I have no idea who someone would say is the greatest painter of our day. Odd Nerdrum, perhaps? Pretty sure he's still alive. Um, but... I, again, then, I don't even know. So, I think um, this, this poem as a celebration of an idol, of a hero, of a role model, is one that should keep us cognizant of that very process. 
our speaker here, in the wake of a fallen captain, just does his job the best he can, and that ship comes home. That is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. There's poetry on the channel every Monday, and I hope to have you back for the next one. Also, Sylvia Plath. Love Sylvia Plath, so be here for that.